got through the first audition and got a callback. And you go into the, go the callback in Midtown Manhattan. And this is my first callback of a film ever, you know. And I get there and the kid comes out and he says, okay, so you're going to read with, um, you, uh, you're next. You're going to read with Bobby and um, you just do the uh, the first scene. We're just doing the first scene today. I said, oh, okay, great. I figure Bobby's like, you know, the, the intern, the kid working the camera. And I walk in and there's Harold Ramis and Robert De Niro. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh boy. Okay, here we go. And uh, I start reading it and I'm in awe. I'm going to be acting if no if, if if this never gets to the yeah. to the movies i'm acting with robert de niro and uh i'm in awe and I'm, i start doing it and this son of a bitch starts losing his place on the on the lines and stops in the middle of the scene and he's mumbling and he's like i don't know where the next the way, what page are we on i'm now i'm like in it i'm like trying to win this, this thing. diamond looks and yellow what i went from yellow that was the line <laughs> yeah, right? what right. the fuck yellow <laughs> yeah. and he caught himself That's he goes what right. the fuck uh, he caught himself <laughs> yeah the chinese and, chick was banging yeah she, oh, she was out of the fuck jack i'm like look at tom Papa. <laughs> yeah so i went from wow this is amazing robert de niro to fuck Robert De Niro's killing me oh but then I I booked it I booked it there was another kid who was reading for it too who I knew from television like I'd seen him in stuff and I was like oh so he's gonna get it I guess that's how it's gonna go and then they I got it I just couldn't believe it and I just got that one scene with De Niro all day long it was just uh it was amazing very cool he's very very cool but Ramis but Ramis Ramis then Ramis called me like five years later out of the blue I'm living out here now. And he calls me and says, uh, I have a great idea for a TV show and I want you to be the host. I'm like, all right, whatever it is, you're Harold Ramis, whatever it is. He said, this is when uh, Pimp Pimp My Ride was on MTV. He goes, you know, I've seen that show. I want to do a show called Pimp My Wife, where you take a couple and the wife isn't as appreciated anymore and you dollar up and you put her in a bar and you make the husband watch on camera how uh, attractive she is to other men and you see the other men trying to pick her up and stuff and it rekindles, makes him realize what a valuable, beautiful woman he's married to and reboots the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good, I guess. I'll do it. And I never heard from him again. (laughs) It never happened. At that time, I was a little confused about stand-up yeah, I was really like uh, I was a regular at the store. The improv would give me spots once in a while. I didn't go to Montreal. Like I was like the black fucking horse. Yeah, and we <laughs> sat there because I shot. You shot in the city. Yeah, I shot in Carney. Oh, really? I shot right where they were shooting the old Sopranos. But yeah, like we shot up the corner. Oh, nice. And it was really interesting because they were running two cameras at once. They were doing the B scene, which was mm-hmm. the barbecue. Uh huh. And the A camera was me and Anthony Lampagli in the beginning. Oh. And then Anthony would have to fucking, we'd take like an hour break, and yeah. Anthony would have to go change into barbecue attire <laughs> and go over there. And I would sit in the front of this bar. This bar was right. great. This yeah. bar was great. Yeah. It was, you know who hung out at this bar? Nuns. <laughs> oh, really? Bingo. <laughs> nuns. When we went there that, that day at lunchtime, yeah. a bunch of nuns showed up like, what the fuck? <laughs> How can this place be closed? The owner's like, I'm sorry, sisters. Go down the block. Yeah, have a little drink on me down great. the corner. So <laughs> New was, Jersey really is a different fucking It's a fucking oh, different. Oh, it really is. And I wish I was lying to you. Was <laughs> nuns, four nuns came to lunch. I to know, but you know what's so funny of growing up there? Like, he says that. It it, it makes perfect You're sense like, I know to that me. Bar. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that, of course, of course. Uh, hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Hilarious. But it was funny because the wind had gotten out that De Niro was in the neighborhood. Oh, oh yeah. So in between one of those takes, the sun was shining on me. They're like, Joey, get out of the sun. But I go, let me go to my little fucking trailer. And they took me shopping. <laughs> they took me shopping. Like the day I went to wardrobe, they're like, you're too big. We don't have nothing for you. <laughs> Let's go shopping. They took a fucking car. Right. My shirt was 1800 The leather what? jacket was four. Oh, my the God. The pants were deuce. The shoes were four. And I'm thinking of robbing this shirt. <laughs> but they had, already, they had already the reputation on me. Every time I went in that fucking uh, trailer, that AD, was, was that shirt? It was, like, <laughs> it was like a two grand silk shirt. So they were watching me. But this is when I found, I'd never met De Niro. Right. Didn't know him. I went into my trailer. And I sat in the stairs, you know, yeah. just to get air. I took my shirt off and had like the Guido look. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm just sitting there fat and fuck. And I'm looking. <laughs> they said, that that's De Niro's trailer. You could tell. You know, yeah, it was a huge fucking trailer. Twice the size of everybody else. Across the street had to be 3,000 people. Wow. With the little fence. A yeah. Little, like a wooden fence that they rolled. It's like the Today Show morning. Yes. <laughs> Today Holy Show. Shit. And cops. And they were all out there. Bobby. Whatever the fuck they were saying. Yeah. I don't think De Niro heard him. But I saw De Niro. The door walked out. Some guy walked out. And then De Niro had that suit on. Yeah. And then she walked down the stairs. They're like, people started clapping. He looked at them and he fucking slammed the door and he pulled himself back into the thing. Really? And then when I went back, they said that he asked to turn the trailer around. Uh, because he has like social issues. Like he has. That's really? why he was stuttering and shit when you were in the room. Wow. He has, like, he's a, you ever see him inside the actor's studio? No. One of the worst episodes <laughs> you'll ever see on TV. He's a horrible interview. Horrible. That's why he doesn't right. do it. Yeah. Because he's not. On Inside the Actor Suit, you know, like when the guy would say, <laughs> Tell me what you said to yourself before you walked into the audition. <laughs> yeah. And he would go, You know already. What are you asking me for? Like, he just kept <laughs> It's on the paper. What do you ask? It was horrible. It was someone, like, I think Conan or someone, like their first show, they got Robert De Niro. It was like the biggest thing, and it, and it was the same thing. Horrible. horrible. He doesn't like it. He has social issues. Yeah. He doesn't really like to, you know, talk. Or... He's such a big star. I mean, for you know, especially growing up where we grew up, the yeah. way we grew up. Oh, my God. Come on. And then I ran into him like four years ago, like at a party, and... I was starstruck. I was so starstruck by seeing him that I forgot we had done a movie together. <laughs> That's how out of my head I was at the moment I saw he's him. A, <laughs> he's a very tricky guy because yeah. when I shot Grudge Match, I went down there the day early. Uh -huh. And this is what I noticed. So don't feel bad. You ready for this story? I get there. <laughs> I go to my room. I'm on a roller joint. I go for a walk. And I ask one of the guys, where's the set? And he goes, ah, today they're shooting two blocks away. Just stay on this street and walk down. So I walked out. It was the gym. Uh -huh. It was the gym in Louisiana. So I walked in the gym. Like everybody shook my hand. Great to have you. We're going to shoot the scene with LL Cool J and De Niro. Nice. Now, De Niro comes in. LL Cool. I don't say nothing. I'm sitting yeah. 60 yards away. I'm watching. Yeah. He slams LL Cool J's hand. They hug. Fist bump. They talk a little bit. They giggle. And then they set up, they did the blocking, and you know, the blocking was phenomenal. Right. De Niro was like, What the fuck you mean you're not gonna help me? And LL Cool J's like, I'm I'm telling you, man, I'm watching that hand. i I remember this. Yeah. But then when they put the cameras in and they said action, the first three takes, LL Cool J was like, I'm actually, cut. LL, what's happening? Nothing, man. I just can't get my words together. I'm like, what the uh. fuck? Is up with LL Cool J. You know, like he's not, yeah. Then he picked it up, and then they kept doing it, and he finally got out of it. The next day it was my turn to shoot with it. Uh -huh. The next day I had one scene with him when he walks in and says, "You my trainer." Yeah. It looks like you ate my trainer. That that line. <laughs> yeah. First, when, when now he came in, Joe. Yeah. How you doing, Mister Daniel? Call me Bobby. Nice to meet you, sir. Here's my trainer. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing about analyze that. I don't say nothing. I loved you in this. I shut my fucking mouth. Don't say nothing, Nero. You know by his butt. Don't start with that Guido shit. I saw a kid grab him by the neck. Oh. It's like, you know, like some Italian kid yeah. grabbing like, Bobby. The fucking security. Get your fucking hands off, Bobby. So, because everybody thinks they, every Italian thinks yeah, they know. Yeah, right. Exactly. Bobby. It's like your uncle. So fucking. Sure enough. We're talking. He's like, uh, you really a comedian? Yeah. He goes, I like this. I mean, he was great. Yeah. And then they go, Joe, are you ready? Sit down. Take the paper. And I'm like, I got this. Yeah. And I went backwards and he walked in. And the first time I looked at him, uh. cut. <laughs> Joey, what happened? <laughs> nothing. 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 I just got overwhelmed there for a second. <laughs> you see, you yeah. see the guy from Goodfellas. Yeah, that's right. You see the devil from Angel Heart. <laughs> yeah. You see Mean Streets. All the faces Godfather. that he's been in Godfather. Ugh. And you just choke. Right. I'm, if you want me to tell you the truth, I just choke. <laughs> I choked the first three times. I was like, I'm gonna... uh, and then the second day he came up yeah. and he was like, this play, play light. That was the day when oh, I really? had man boobs. Yeah. And I was and that day was great. And then there was another scene the next day where he had to call me a, a fat so... fuck. And he came over to me. He goes, I'm going to say fat fuck. Does that bother you? If it bothers you, I won't say it. I go, you're Robert De Niro. If you yep. put it in my ass right now, I will not complain. You understand me? At least I got the fucking power that De Niro fucked me in the best. ass.
But he, that's the thing about him. <laughs> yeah. He is powerful. I mean, powerful. there's so much history. So you there. saw him at a party and you forgot. I him. had no problem acting with him. Acting with him, I was I was fine. It wasn't a big deal. He had a, a woman like his as soon as this they'd say cut, his hair and makeup lady was on him and like trimming him up and doing his name. I mean everything. And after every every break, cut back prepping him, and I'm just standing there like an idiot. And I'm like, uh, how? I start making jokes. I'm like, how's my hair? How about my hair? <laughs> you, what, anyone want to take care of my hair? And he's like, this guy with his hair. This guy really loves his hair. And we had like a good time. It was totally cool. I'm at a party. It's a New Year's Eve party. He walks in. Everyone's all flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. I'm like, that, 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 that. I'm like, I wish I had something to say to him, like to break the ice. I get home that night. I'm like, wait. I was in a movie yeah, with him. <laughs> I, totally, with him. <laughs> I totally spaced out. It's uh, yeah, it's, really it's powerful. I've never seen Pacino. Like I've never seen the, the, nobody else. Yeah, made me, me neither. I worked with a lot. James Coburn made me stutter. Oh yeah, that motherfucker yeah. can make you stutter just by it. Like I walked in there, and I, I was overwhelmed by tears. Yeah, like every time I look at him, I had tears <laughs> in my eyes. I thought about Bruce Lee and carrying the casket. <laughs> I gotta yeah. tell you, there what was a, a what a cool thing though. I mean, what a cool thing, you know, right? To be like bumming around New Jersey and North Bergen and sitting at the shore, and then like to just to have done one scene with these guys, let alone multiple stuff. I mean, that's pretty special. You leave there so crazy, going, "What the fuck just happened?" Yeah, and you don't make a big deal about it. You it's just so... hold it someplace close to your heart. <laughs> yeah, and anytime a bad thought comes up, you replace yeah. that. Hey. Yeah. All right, so I came in a minute, but I'm going to move with Robert De Niro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if it's 2 in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking wide eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going re- to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?